Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to Gospel Live. I'm glad to be with you. Today, we're going to get into a short teaching about how the gospel man and woman is to take authority over their malehood and femalehood. The male and the female came from the earth. The man and the woman came from God. The male and the female is a habitation of the man and the woman in Christ. This is why we have to take authority over our malehood and femalehood in the flesh so that we can have dominion in the earth. We can operate in dominion in the earth. Okay, so let us get started in this teaching. Uh, part one, the gospel man and woman must subdue the male and female, whether biblical or non-biblical. The flesh got to come under the authority of the spirit. After the spirit, whether man or woman, is born back into the living Christ. Genesis 1, 27, 28. So God created man in his own image, and in the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. That's the Adamic creation. Mankind, that's the flesh. And God blessed them and said, be fruitful. And said unto them, them, not him, them, be fruitful and multiply. Replenish the earth, subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. So we see divine order here. First, he tells them to be fruitful and multiply. That's one. Replenish and subdue the earth. That's two. And to take dominion over what's in the earth. That's three. But your dominion in the earth comes through you first. Replenishing and subduing the earth. Now, what is the earth? When we look at the letter, we may think the earth is, is this thing we live in. Yes, this is the earth. But when it says earth here, it's talk. It's actually talking about the male and the female. Because the male and the female came from the earth. And we as gospel men and women are to take dominion over the aspect of us that came from the earth. Replenish it. Replenish the male and the female. Subdue. The word subdue means to take control or take authority over the male and the female. The gospel man and woman must take authority over his malehood and his femalehood to subdue it, to bring it into subjection. Because it's through the, it's through the authority of the male and the female, the gospel man and the woman taking authority over the male and the female, will you have dominion in the earth. Will you have dominion in the earth? And dominion is the ability to overcome the things you see, to live beyond the things you see, not living subject to the things you see. Okay. Uh, and so he blessed them. Then he said, replenish the earth. And the earth is the, the male and female aspect of us in this text. That's, that's the part of us that came from the earth, the male and the female. Replenish the male and the female and subdue them. As a gospel man, I have to subdue my malehood. Now, how do, as a gospel man in the spirit, I subdue my malehood in the flesh? Through sanctification of the spirit. Because as I'm abiding in the spirit of Christ within, as a man, he's going to sanctify my malehood in the flesh by the fruit of the spirit without. Likewise, the one man. As the gospel woman is abiding in the, in the spirit of Christ within, he's going to sanctify her flesh, which is the female, by the fruit of the spirit without. This, the, the sanctification of the flesh is how you subdue, how you subdue the flesh. It's how you bring it into subjection. You bring the, the flesh under the authority of Christ, which Christ does through your manhood and womanhood. 
But this cannot be done outside of your manhood or womanhood because this is a divine work. All right, so you take authority over the male and female, over our malehood and femalehood as we're abiding in Christ, in the eternal spirit. So as we're abiding in Christ in the eternal spirit, we're becoming fruitful and multiplying. That's one. Then we take, we replenish the, the earth and subdue it, which is the biblical male and female or non-biblical male and female. We take authority over the male and female. We sub, sub, subdue our malehood and manhood. That's two. And three, we take dominion over what's in the earth. But your dominion going to come from your authority. And your authority comes from Christ sanctifying you spirit, soul, and body through your transformed spirit. Through your transformed spirit, through your born again transformed spirit. Because there was a spiritual age before this natural age. And at the end of this natural age, we're going back to the spiritual age. Now, just because we're, we're out of the spiritual age and he put us as spiritual men and women in physical bodies doesn't mean we exist naturally. No, we still live spiritually. We just as spiritual men and women, we take dominion over what he put us in, these biblical male and female bodies. How do we take dominion over it? Through the righteousness of Christ. Because we were in Christ, the four chosen were in Christ when he made these temples, male and female temples, and put us in them. We were in these temples in Christ. Okay. Let us go to uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 51, I mean, 1, 1 Corinthians 15, 44 through 50. <clears throat> A second. All right. 44. It is sown a net of First Corinthians 15, that's 44 through that, that's 44 through 50. Okay. 44. And so it is written that the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. Okay, now it's it's talking about the perspective from, from which we're made. Remember, the, the flesh was made, the spirit was created, but we're born flesh first due to being dead in our sins and trespasses. And as we get to the uh to verse 50, it's gonna it's gonna clarify that it's making the distinction between the spirit and the flesh. It is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and a spiritual body. There is a natural body and a spiritual body, just like there is a natural man and woman and a natural male and female, and there's a spiritual male and, uh, man and woman. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. He was flesh. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. That's Christ. That's Christ. But Christ was never made. It's, it's talked about the perspective from which the perspective of the flesh. We, we are the Adamic creation. The first Adam is flesh. The, the, the born-again Adam is spirit. All right. how, be, how be that was not first which was spiritual, but that which is natural? Because we're born naturally. Then through the, through the work of the gospel, the born again gospel, we become we become spiritual, but we're born flesh first, dead in our sins and trespasses. So we don't know anything but the flesh. And afterward, that which is spiritual, that's through being born again. That's gonna come the sanctification of then gonna gonna come the sanctification of the flesh. The first man is of the earth, earthy. You see, this is where the Lord said in Genesis to take dominion over the earth. He was talking about take dominion over the male and the female. Now, the authority 
of the man and the woman to take dominion over the male and female was Christ. We, we had to abide in Christ and it would be done. The male and the female would be subdued. The male and female would come under the authority of the Spirit and by the and by the sanctifi sanctifying fruit of the Spirit, we would have dominion in the earth. All things come according to divine order. There has to be divine order. Nothing comes outside of that divine order. It's always spirit first. It's never flesh first and spirit last. That's not divine order. As is the earthy, they that were taken from the earth, such are they also that are earthy. You know, that which is natural is natural. And as is the heavenly, such as they also that are heavenly. That which is spiritual is spiritual. You know, uh, uh, Romans 8, I think it's 5, 4 or 5, it says that uh, they that are after the flesh, earthy, do mind the things of the flesh. And they that are after the spirit, which are spiritual, do mind the things of the spirit. And we have borne the image of the earthy, being born of the flesh. But we shall also bear the image of the heavenly when we're born of the spirit and the flesh is sanctified by the fruit of the spirit. 50. And we need to pay attention to this one carefully. Here's how you know he was making that distinction between the, the, the man and the male, the woman and the female. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither does corruption inherit incorruption. The male and the female cannot inherit the things of the spirit because they were not made to. The male and the female is the beneficiary of the things of Christ. But the male and female cannot inherit the things of Christ. Only the spiritual man can. Why? Because the flesh can't inherit the spirit. The flesh must come under the authority the sanctifying government of the spirit, but the flesh cannot inherit the spirit. The flesh must be sanctified by the fruit of the spirit. So we as spiritual men and women can live through the flesh, not exist dead in our sins and trespasses, living subject, existing subject to the flesh because outside of Christ, nothing lives. It only exists. We got set free from these prisons and these prisons, once again, have to become temples of Christ. Anything called a temple that's outside of Christ, it's not a temple, it's a prison. It's not a temple, it's a prison. So now this I say, that, say brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So it's letting us know, or as scripture is gospel translated, to distinguish the difference between your malehood and your manhood, your femalehood, your womanhood, and as a woman or man in Christ, abide in that threefold work so Christ can take dominion over the flesh and sanctify it in accordance with the fruit of the spirit so that the flesh can function in accordance with the spirit. Because we are spirit, soul, and body. Divine order must be restored. Everything that comes to the soul and the body comes through our transformed spirit. It doesn't come outside of the circumcision. It comes through the circumcision. And that's the end of part one of this teaching. I'll be back with you with part two. And uh, these teachings, the benefit of these teachings are for the gospel man and woman. You have to be born again. If you're just a pew warming church person, You can't benefit from the, the, the first fruit preservation of Christ. The grave really has dominion over you. You have to ask the Lord because we are all at the mercy of Christ. Unless religion didn't blind, blinded you to that reality, we are all at the mercy of Christ. These, these work-based faith churches that, that people are operating in, that, that stuff is no good. We are all at the mercy of Christ. And only the light of Christ will bring you to the revelation that you are at the mercy of Christ. 
And you have to be born into these things. You have to be born into the goodness of God. Anything outside of that, you can see a fallen creation of Christ, but you cannot enjoy the Christ life, which is the goodness of Christ, which is a gift to us. And I'll be back with you with part two. I love you and I thank you. Thank you for your time. God bless you.